Southern Africa, home of many wild animals. Whether small or big, the young animals especially need human help. And when the young ones are strong enough, the animal rescuers help them to settle back into the wild. In this episode of Raising Wildlife, an animal rescuer takes care of baby dussies. You'd never guess, but these creatures are the next of kin to elephants. Gamekeepers are tracking a rhino mom and her baby. They need to see if the mother and her new baby are coping in the wilderness. And this porcupine orphan must learn a lot from its surrogate mother before it can go back into the wild. First, we travel to a private reserve in northern KwaZulu-Natal. This is one of the most wild, undisturbed parts of South Africa. Here you'll find grasslands and thick thorn felt, the perfect refuge for some of the world's most endangered wild animals, the rhino. Here at Somkanda, monitoring wild animals is an important part of their daily routine. My name is Zaman Nube. I'm working in, here in Somkanda Game Reserve in KwaZulu-Natal. Here in Somkanda, we're taking care of the rhinos and all other endangered species. Zama grew up nearby. He loved the stories his grandmother told him about wild animals when he was little. Now he's one of their passionate caretakers. Okay, I'm going to be jumping out here to check if we can find the fresh tracks of these rhinos we're looking for. Thereafter, if we do find the tracks, then we'll start going to meet up with the other team. Then we come back, start for tra tracking from here. All eyes are on the job. Finding the wild animals is a team effort. Can Zama find evidence here that will give direction to their search? There's a lot of activity of the other animals, but not the ones I'm looking for. Fresh tracks tell a story about all the wild animals in the area. Zama's eyes are finely tuned to interpreting these tracks. It's a giraffe track, but it looks old. It's right here. And also there's a fresh one right here. Although this waterhole is a popular spot for rhino, it doesn't look like Zama's going to find any. But wait! Likely there's one track of a black rhino which was going up into the water and it came down also the same way. Well spotted! Black rhinos are very difficult to find as they're shy and nervous and like to take refuge in thick bush. So we're going to jump back to the car and try to find the rhino monitors there just um, ahead of us. That's where we'll meet with them and we'll start tracking as a team. Being a rhino tracker is a calling. The rhino is Zama's favourite kind of wild animal, so he brings a lot of passion to his job. It's very important to track the animals so that we can be able to follow each individual and see if they're all okay. But mum won't be keen to show off her baby that easily. Now let's pay a visit to Daktari Wildlife Orphanage. It's in the Limpopo province, right next to the Kruger National Park. Daktari means doctor in Swahili, and here in the middle of the bushveld, there's a place that opens its door to any kind of wild animal. Recently, four abandoned baby dussies were brought here. They needed to be hand-reared to survive. Hi, my name is Willington Mafo. Uh, we are here at Daktari Bush School and Wildlife Orphanage. Uh, here my position is like I'm, 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 I'm animal and camp manager. Here at Daktari, there are all kinds of characters that need Wellington's attention. Dassies are sociable creatures and live in large groups or colonies. These little ones have settled down well in their new home. This side we have two enclosures and then the first one we have four dassies, four baby dassies and then the other one we have three adults. The baby dassies are six months old. They came to us so that we can raise them 
and then introduce them to the other old ones. This one's tucking into some tasty leaves. Dussies like to eat the leaves of shrubs and trees. But the young ones aren't yet fully onto eating solids. What I love about uh, this job is uh, I interact with animals, which is, is something that I always want to be, like I, want, I, I wanted to be close to the animals. They're looking all sweet and innocent now, and Wellington is calm and collected, but he has his work cut out for him. You'll soon see that feeding these four babies is more than a handful. I'm going to feed them now. So it's going to be a little bit difficult to feed all four of them because like, they're going to fight for one syringe because I'm, I'm, I'm the only one. Breakfast doesn't come easily. It's tough having three greedy siblings. But let's get back to Sonkanda Game Reserve. Zama has joined up with his team and it's time to put telemetry to the test. The rhinos are fitted with foot collars so that their location can be picked up by the antennae. The beep that you, you can hear from that guy on his telemetry must be the female rhino with the baby here around. The sound that comes out there is telling me that the rhino is not far from here. Telemetry helps to pinpoint a rhino within a few hundred meters. But it's still hard to see them in this thick bush. But he is confirming that the signal is on this direction. So, but he's suggesting that we can just maybe drive another, another 300 meters, then we can stop and find out where exactly the position is. Using telemetry is useful but not always consistent. The problem is these animals, they can walk. They can cover a huge ground in, 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 in an hour. We, we normally walk 15 to 10 to 15 kilometers to find one animal. To track an animal, you need to think like an animal. Understanding animals and being able to anticipate what they're going to do will help to find them. This is the place where we think this rhino will be close. So Sitle will jump down and continue ch checking if maybe we are on the exact position of the rhino. Have they made the right deduction? There's always a chance the rhino will be unpredictable. trying to find out where we can go from here. Because from there, the signal was strong and pointing in this direction, in the south direction. But now it seems like it's gone. But it's something that we always find when we are trekking here. These collars, sometimes they go off and on again. Being a rhino tracker requires persistence. Sitle is not one to give up easily. Somewhere out there, there's a black rhino and her baby. But where? It's better when we see the tracks, because we can tell, even the signal is going, then we can tell which direction we, can, we could look at. But now, without the tracks, it's very difficult to detect where you should go from here. Sitle's picked up something. At last, the team's got some direction. But in this 16,000 hectare reserve, there's still some luck needed. Whether we'll catch a glimpse of the rhino remains uncertain. Back to Daktari Wildlife Orphanage, where many wild animals receive care. Wellington is the animal manager here, but these four baby dussies are not very easily managed. So afterwards to check if it's not hot and then I put it on my wrist. And then what you do is just do like this and you just push, it, push your syringe slowly. You don't want it to go too quickly. Mmm, this tastes good. It's not surprising that someone else wants a turn, which inevitably turns into a spat.
So this is what they do. And they put like their backs on the, on the other one's head so that if this one attacks, and it can only attack the back, not the face. More recently, scientists have discovered that Dussies are sophisticated communicators. They can make many different sounds which they put together to create individual messages, sometimes lasting several minutes. What I'm trying to do, I'm trying to reduce to feed them with pronutrients so that they can get to, to eat the solid food and, and, and hopefully um, about two months or, or, or further uh, or more and we're going to try to introduce them with the, with the other ones and then they can build up one big family and they can go back to the wild. Caring for wild animals like this forms a strong bond. Wellington likes to be able to check up on how recently released animals are doing in the wild, so he pays a visit to this rocky outcrop. Here it's where we released our Dasi named Cashew, and Cashew has been with us for, for long, for at least about three years. I'm gonna go and have a look and see if we can find him there. And then we usually come here, and then he usually here as well. This is the perfect hangout for a Dasi. Cashew! Is he here? Cashew! There are lots of places to hide. Cashew, come! Cashew and his friends seem to be out for the day. Cashew! There's not a Dasi in sight anywhere. Uh, here it's where we release him. It's his home and then where he lives normally. And every time when we come here, we find him here. And now he's not here. It seems like he's not here and we're going to try to see if we can find him. I wonder where Cashew could be. Cashew! Wellington longs to be reunited with his friend. Will his persistence be rewarded? Cashew! Now let's head for the Tiniqua Wildlife and Rehabilitation Center. Taniqua started by caring for injured birds in a wooden shed, but today it is one of the largest rehabilitation centers in the Western Cape. I'm Mandy Freeman, founder of Taniqua Rehabilitation Center, and we're in the Western Cape. This is my animal keeper, Boniwe. So we have a little porcupine in rehab at the moment. He's a, a very young porcupine that came to us when he was about two weeks old. Meet Pork Chop. Now he's two months old and growing up to be a keen explorer. Porcupines are rodents, but differ from other family members because of their protective quills. And the first thing we do is weigh um, the animal and that will give us an indication of how much food we need to give. A tasty meal for a porcupet or baby porcupine is underway. There's a certain amount of milk powder to water ratio and that helps with his growing and making sure he has all the vitamins and proteins necessary for him. And um, over here we've got um, some of his apples and his carrots. Pork chop feeds from a hamster bottle, which minimizes human contact. Let's go and feed him. Okay. Later, Pork Chop will be released into an enclosure with natural bush. But for now, he lives in a smaller cage at Teniqua. Porcupines don't have very good eyesight, so um, they rely a lot on smell and sound. A porcupine's quills are soft at birth, but they harden about an hour after the babies are born. Young porcupines stay with their mums for up to a year. We're feeding him two times a day now, and um, that is because he's now onto solids. And when we do come to feed him, it's a good time to just observe him and look at his development. Pork Chop made short work of that. Now it's time for his walk. Unfortunately, there's an emergency. Some baby tortoises have just been admitted. We're going to weigh them individually. We have to mark them because we're going to uh, make sure that they grow at a consistent rate. Baby tortoises are quite independent, but need to be protected as they're very small.
Okay, um, Hink, just check that there's no injuries on him. Tortoises bask in the sun to regulate their body temperature. To keep them healthy, it's important to simulate this. So now that we've weighed them, the next step in the admission is to take them into our high care area and every night we're going to bring them back into there just to try and moderate the cold and the hot during the day. At last it's time for Pork Chop's walk in the wild. Every day we take the porcupine out um, and let them experience natural habitat and that's a really important part of the rehabilitation process and getting them back into a natural environment. So every day Porkchop goes for a walk and in, in that time he's introduced to his natural food source and one of that is bark. <laughs> what are those sounds Boniwe is making? <laughs> Boniwe is making the sound that his mother would make to encourage him back to us. <laughs> In the wild, porcupines eat fruits, roots, tubers, bulbs and bark. Porkchop needs to learn how to forage for his food. If he doesn't, he will not be able to be released. At least once a day he needs to go out. And as he gets older, we will increase the time that he spends out. His pre-release area will be a big area like this, um, where he will then spend his whole time in that area by himself. So many enticing smells. Little Pork Chop loves the great outdoors. Finally, it's time to go back home. But we can see Pork Chop knows where he belongs. Soon you'll be free. Back at Sumkanda Game Reserve in KwaZulu-Natal, Zama and his team are still in search of the black rhino and her calf. They've got a signal and are making progress. On their way, they pass by a grisly reminder. Rhino horn is worth more than gold on the black market. Poaching is a real threat. So this is the site of one of the, our rhinos which was killed in 2014. Since then, the game reserve um, came around and had the number of, of, the, of the security in the game park. So we introduced the APU, which is the armed team. And also there is more of other field rangers, which they patrolling fences every day to make sure there's no one coming into the game reserve. Illicit trade in rhino horn is big business. Unfortunately, these are the drastic precautions that need to be taken to protect rhino. All of Zama's senses are tuned to finding evidence of rhino. Something has caught his attention. They were sleeping here. It looks like we're getting close. The rhino and her baby may be nearby. It's a little bit thicker in here. The signal is coming from there, but we only have one trail to go in. We'll see, but we might disturb them. She won't run far. We'll just give them some time to relax, and we keep following again. Zama makes his way carefully. It looks as if they've seen something. At last, our first glimpse. You can actually hear them now. I just saw one there, but it was just a second. And it disappeared, but I can hear some noises up there. We were lucky to get close. But now they've gone. Back at Daktari Wildlife Orphanage in Limpopo, Wellington didn't find the dussy he released some time back, but he'll try again today. He's caring for some orphaned baby dussies, and they're flourishing in his care. As animal manager, he also helps at Daktari's school. We are here at Daktari Bush School and Wildlife Orphanage. And then here at Daktari, we welcome eight kids every week and we teach them about the wildlife and the environment. 
As a boy, a visit to Daktari school was how Wellington discovered his love of animals. We educate kids about uh, taking care of their environment and as also their, their animals. If like they want to know more about the animals, they do ask me and then I tell as much as I know. Daktari was founded by Michelle Merrifield and her husband Ian. They realize that it's important to care about wild animals and share their passion. The children have never grown up in the bush. They don't know what the bush is all about. They've grown up in the village. So they know about cattle and, and donkeys and goats and all these other animals. They've never seen them. And that's what gave us the concept of trying to teach the young children about the environment and because they never heard about it. You can't expect them to look after it if they don't know anything about it. Having a hands-on opportunity to rehabilitate and care for wild animals helps to inspire the next generation to take better care of all living things on our planet. Wellington's back to search for Cashew, but finds his friend is still not there. I can still see his poops away. Where he poops and then which is, uh, it shows that he's, he still lives here. Maybe he might just go on away to find food. If the food that they prefer is not here, then they have to go out to find food. Cashew! Cashew! Wellington's ever hopeful. He's not here. At last, he accepts. I looked around and unfortunately I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't find him. So, which is a good thing, and then which I uh, think that he, uh, he might be gone more in the bush to find food. Rehabilitating wild animals is bittersweet. Cashew is home in the wild now, but there's no time to be sad. Back home, four Dussies need his care so that they can follow in Cashew's footsteps. At Somkanda Wildlife Reserve, Zama and his rhino monitoring team have been in patient pursuit of a rhino mother and her baby. They were rewarded with a glimpse, but then the rhino slipped away. Luckily, they haven't gone far. We can still see the rhino. He, she's moving slowly with this trail. We just saw her back now. Rhinos can move surprisingly quickly. Zama needs to keep up stealthily. After taking so long to find them, he doesn't want to blow his chances. He's trying to get as close as possible, but needs to remember that black rhinos can be aggressive, especially a mother who's looking out for her calf. There's always a chance that he'll need to climb one of these trees. Fast. Zama and his colleague get closer to completing their monitoring task. Rhino can't see well, but they have a keen sense of smell and hearing. Will they be able to outwit the rhino mother? They're moving into open terrain. This should give the monitors a better view. If you consider how close Zama and his crew can get to these highly endangered animals, you realize how easily they can be poached. After Somkanda lost four rhinos to poaching, they decided to dehorn their animals. This needs to take place once a year. South Africa has one of the largest population of rhino so it plays a very important role in the conservation of this endangered species.
Yo, I'm so excited. We just found the mom and the baby, the one that we were looking for. We've seen both sides of the runner, which is the most important part of the monitoring, where you see both sides of the, of the body, making sure that they're not injured, there is no wounds on them. So both mom and the baby, they looking good. Mission accomplished. Zama and his team can report that all's well with mother and baby and all the family.